Recently in the news, there was a big story about a declassified event detailing how Apollo 10 astronauts heard space music as they explored the dark side of the moon during their lunar orbit in 1969. Sounds mysterious. We should get to the bottom of it. While it's true that the Apollo 10 astronauts heard strange whistling sounds in their headsets, there's a very simple explanation for what they were actually hearing, and it's been public knowledge since the 1970s. In the audio recordings from the Apollo 10 mission, astronaut Gene Cernan, who was piloting the lunar module, asks John Young, who was piloting the command module, if he hears that whistling sound. It is Cernan who calls it music, and even says it sounds outer spacey. At the end of this video, we will reveal the secret behind Gene Cernan's space music. But for now, I want to take his recording and do something really cool with it inside of Omnisphere 2. If at this point you are unfamiliar with how to import your own audio into Omnisphere 2, we highly suggest you click the link on your screen right now and go check that video out. If you're on a mobile device, we've provided a link for you in the body text below. Now at this time, NASA has not yet made the whistling sound recording available for download, but we were able to get the declassified conversation down Loaded between Cernan and Young. So we've taken that, we've cut out the relevant segment that we're going to use, imported it into Omnisphere 2, and now we're going to manipulate it. With Omnisphere 2 open, let us first select the layer on which our sound recording resides. And now, let's venture into the granular oscillator. But before we engage it, let us hear this mysterious recording. That hit music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Turn on the granular oscillator, and let's MIDI learn one of the knobs on our controller to the lower slider so we can manipulate that. Let's hear what the audio sounds like as we scrub through it using the speed parameter. And now we're diving into the deep, dark catacombs of really transforming Mr. Cernan's vocal by switching over to the position parameter, and we'll use it to scrub through the recording, both forward and in reverse. Now, let's click on the Effects Auxiliary Bus and instantiate Innerspace. On your screen, you should be able to see the effects presets that I selected. Let's now navigate to Layer A's Effects Rack and instantiate the Precision Compressor. We're going to use this to boost the recording a tad, and then we're going to add Power Filter with a 24 dB low-pass filter setting. At this point, let's learn two more MIDI controller knobs, one to the Aux Send, and the other to the Power Filter's Cutoff knob. I'm also going to assign an envelope to this knob so that we can add movement to the sound. Let's just give it a simple spike and have it pulse in 16th note beats. Now I don't want this playing all the time, so I want to be able to add it or remove it. Therefore, let us assign another MIDI controller knob to the depth slider. At this point, you should now have four of your MIDI controller knobs assigned to parameters inside Omnisphere 2. We're going to add two more MIDI controller knobs to the mix and reveal the secret of the space music after we check out what we've got so far.
Well, according to Space.com, the whistling sound, it turned out, was nothing more than interference between the VHF radios on the two different vehicles. Yep, it's a phenomenon known as heterodyning. It's an effect that we can produce today with a synthesizer's ring modulator. So how fitting is it then to use the ring modulator inside Omnisphere 2 to close our video with? So let's turn the ring modulator on, and then we're going to learn two more MIDI controller knobs. The first one to the ring modulation frequency slider, and our last knob will get assigned to the ring modulator depth. In total, you should now have six MIDI controller knobs assigned to Omnisphere 2. Let's play it and see what kind of space music we can create with that now famous radio communication of Apollo 10's 1969 lunar mission. We'd like to offer a special thank you to NASA for the incredible pictures and for making their historical sound recording archive available for public use. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be the first to know when new videos arrive.